That afternoon, instead of bringing Madison back to their apartment, Ian brought her to his family's house. The Weston family had a tradition of gathering once a week for a meal. Everyone who was in town had to come, with no exceptions. When the young couple pulled up to the mansion, they saw Daniel and Cassandra playing in the front yard with the family dog, Bo. Ian's siblings went to greet them, and Daniel teased, What happened to your mouth? Do I need to tell Madison to go easy on you? Ian and Cassandra grinned in response, but Madison felt something that she couldn't quite put into words. She had relaxed once they had gotten away from the office, but she felt awkward at the joke. It wasn't as though she wanted to share that Ian's mouth was raw because of her jealous effort to wipe away every trace of Claire. She took a breath and decided to put that behind her, focusing instead on what was right in front of her. You think you're so funny, Cassandra responded, laughing as she pulled Madison over toward the dog so they could play with him together. Ian, go take a shower and change your clothes. Dinner should be ready soon. Ian did as he was told while Daniel leisurely walked back over to the two women. The family dog was a husky, and Diana absolutely adored him. She had that in common with Madison, who loved dogs, especially huskies. Go get it, Daniel shouted as he threw the dog's ball as hard as he could. Bo sprinted over and pounced on it. As Bo was running back toward him, Daniel glanced at Madison and asked, Are you two going to have kids soon? Madison was surprised at the sudden topic change. She turned to her siblings-in-law and saw that they were smiling back at her. Every time Daniel smiled, he looked like he was posing for the cover of a magazine. With his mouth turned up into a crooked grin, Cassandra's smile at the moment was tighter, as though she felt awkward at her brother's question. Madison opened her mouth to respond, but her voice was stuck in her throat, and she couldn't say a word. Bo brought the ball back and wagged his big tail to beg for Daniel to throw it again. The man obliged before he continued. It's good to take things slow and wait until you're both ready. Grandma's getting older, though, and I'm sure she'd love to meet her great-grandchild. It doesn't look like Cassandra or I am going to have kids in the foreseeable future. So, if you're on the fence, I think you should just go for it. The whole family would be so excited. Madison had never thought that Daniel would say something like that. The pressure she had already felt from the Weston family grew even stronger, and she felt as though she was being backed into a corner. She thought, at this point, everyone has made comments about us having children. Even Ian mentioned having a baby the first time we met his family. Why can't anyone give me some space to think about this? If she could overcome the trauma from her past, then maybe she would feel ready to bring the next generation of Westons into the world. After the previous night, however, she didn't think that was likely to happen any time soon. Daniel didn't seem to realize the impact of what he had said, and he carelessly ran across the yard with Bo, who chased him in excitement. Cassandra was standing right next to Madison, and she noticed her sister-in-law wasn't happy about Daniel's little speech. She leaned close and remarked, It's okay not to be ready. Try to ignore the pressure from everyone and just do what's right for you. With that, Madison suddenly understood why Daniel had felt the need to speak up. Her sister-in-law had been in love with Shane for a long time, and she hadn't thought twice about spending her youth waiting for him to notice her. Clearly, the rest of the family wasn't thrilled about her decision to stay single and wait to have children. Are they hoping that she'll change her mind if Ian and I have a baby? Madison wondered. She didn't say anything, and her emotions were whipping around like a tornado but she managed to smile and nod politely. Originally, she had thought that marrying Ian would be a temporary measure. Being married would allow her to be independent of her family and work on her career, and eventually she could get a divorce. Now, however, she knew that wasn't realistic. There was no longer any doubt in her mind that she was in love with Ian, and she couldn't just walk away from him. On top of that, she had stopped working at Green, and she was done with school. From her in-law's perspective, she was in the perfect position to focus on starting a family. None of that helped her overcome the hurdle in her heart. A while later, with her emotions firmly squashed down to confront later, Madison went up to let Ian know that dinner was ready. As soon as she opened the door to his room, she blushed at the shocking sight that greeted her. 
She quickly closed the door behind her as she stepped in and turned away from him with her hand on her mouth. Ian had just come out of the bathroom, and he was only wearing a towel around his waist. When he heard his wife come in, he turned toward the door, but there was no trace of nervousness on his face. There were still water droplets on his body as he looked at Madison, who still had her back to him. He smiled at her affectionately, and he stopped gathering his clothes together. I'm sorry, I didn't know you weren't dressed, she managed to squeak out. Calming down a bit, she stammered, I, I came to tell you that dinner's ready, I can, I'll just go. As she finished speaking and moved to open the door, Ian came up behind her and grabbed her wrist. Her face was scarlet as she hesitantly turned to face the half-naked man. She carefully averted her eyes to avoid staring at his figure. I, I, she stuttered, which her husband thought was adorable. This seems familiar, don't you think? He teased. That triggered the memory of the first time Madison had met him. It was very similar, though she was somehow even more embarrassed this time. Her eyes flashed up to meet his, and her mouth fell open as she remembered that day. Ian was mesmerized by her expression, and he reached out to lift her chin with his hand. She stole my heart. It's only fair she repays me a little, he thought. The faint smell of his soap filled her nose, and her hands unconsciously climbed onto his bare chest. Her breathing quickened, but it wasn't as sharp or panicked as it had been the night before. Ian kissed her, but he was focused on her reaction, and he moved slowly and deliberately. She kissed him back and didn't protest in any way when he wrapped an arm around her and drew her close. When he pulled back, her skin was flushed red. She leaned into his embrace as he breathed heavily. Maybe she really is in love with me. If that look isn't love, I don't know what is, he mused as he gazed at her. Leaning on her husband, she felt like she was floating. She heard his voice as if it was echoing from the sky as he teased. I just brushed my teeth so I know I don't have bad breath. There's no reason to push me away now. He pulled away, and she reached up to touch her lips. Taking a deep breath, she could smell the lingering scent of mint that he had left behind. At seven o'clock in the evening, everyone was present in the dining room of the Weston Mansion other than Diana. Olivia smiled as she placed some salad on a plate for her daughter-in-law and announced, Madison isn't working at the moment, so now that she's well-rested, maybe there will be time to bring a new addition to the family. The Westons all lit up at that declaration. It had been a long time since the family had given the good news that hadn't been marred by some kind of downside. If a new baby was around, everyone thought that would be wonderful. Everyone, except Madison, Ian thought, noticing that her fingers trembled as she reached for her salad plate. His eyes narrowed as he made note of her reaction, but he chose not to point it out. Instead, he asked, You're not working anymore? Olivia and Edward glanced at each other in surprise, since they had assumed Ian would know that his wife had left her job. Even Daniel and Cassandra turned to the young couple, looking puzzled. Madison saw everyone's eyes on her as she muttered, No, I just quit my job at the Green and decided to take a break. I don't feel like I'm at my best right now. Silence weighed heavily in the room, and everyone could tell that Ian wasn't happy. His lips were pursed as he peered at his wife. He knew how much she valued having some level of financial independence, Previously, she had mentioned wanting to continue her studies at some point in the future. He knew her past had made her leery of being too dependent on others. She finally got a job so she could make her own money, and she's just given that up? She didn't even mention anything about it to me? He thought in confusion. Madison didn't elaborate on her statement, though she did shoot Ian a smile as he passed him one of the dishes. After a few minutes, the tension in the atmosphere started to fade. The rest of the meal passed awkwardly, and only Daniel made an effort to make conversation. After everyone was done, Ian reached out and took his wife's hand, expecting to leave and head to their apartment. Before they could walk out, Olivia ordered one of the housekeepers to fetch a few boxes and put them in Ian's car. She reminded Madison, Don't forget to use these herbs and essential oils. They're supposed to boost your health, and there's information about them in the boxes. I'll send some more over later if you think you'll run out. 
Even though Olivia was vague, everyone knew that when she said they were meant to boost health, she meant that they would boost fertility. Ian could feel Madison's hand stiffen in his, and he looked at her thoughtfully, but stayed silent. Although this was far from the first time Madison had eaten with the Westons, she thought it had been the most exhausting occasion to date. Since Diana wasn't there, she had hoped it would be easier, but that had been foolish optimism. As they headed home in the luxury SUV, Madison opened the window to allow the crisp air to blow in and leaned her head on the door. Ian looked at her and narrowed his eyes. He wasn't sure what was going on with her, but he intended to get to the bottom of it.